just to love the world that he gave his only son. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Beloved son, whoa. But whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have Everlasting love. God loves you, God loves you, God loves you with an everlasting love. God loves you, God loves you, God loves you with an everlasting love. God truly loves us. And the song that we were singing, God loves you very much. You know, it's actually a powerful truth because God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for us and to pay the price for our sins. And so God truly, he loves Amen. us and Praise he gave his Lord. life for us. Hallelujah. And it's a good opportunity for you to come again and share the word of God with you in your homes. That's and right. I'm Shama and I'm here with my sister Shalom. And we're truly delighted to come back with another episode of Just Like Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Let's get into the scriptures. And God's word is so wonderful. That's right. And you know, one of the things I truly believe that all of us need to hear is that God loves us very much. That's true. Yeah. I want to take you to a scripture in the book of John, chapter 3, in verse 16. And it says, For God so loved the world, 
that he gave his only begotten son, mm. that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. You see, there's so much of truth in this verse because the first part says God loves the world so much. Yeah. I mean, he loves the world. Yeah. That's his very nature, yeah. to love people. And he didn't just say, I love the world, but he demonstrated his love by giving his only begotten son to us. That's, right. That's what this verse is. God so loved the world. Mm. And I love that word so, yeah. because it just doesn't say God just loved the world. Yeah. But God so loved the world That's right. that he gave, he demonstrated his love in action mm. by giving us his only begotten son. That's right. And maybe, you know, you don't have any idea of who God is, because sometimes we have this idea that God is far away from us and, you know, mm -hmm. he's just somewhere out there, not involved with anything. But today you can know that God loves you very much. That's right. It's amazing how when you see in the scriptures, it tells us many times about the nature of God, which is love. I mean, that's yeah. his very nature. Mm. In fact, in another verse, we're just going to quickly go to these scriptures and explain. In another verse, in 1 John, it tells us, it's a very short verse, but there's so much of truth and life in it. Mm. It says in 1 John, um, chapter 4, verse 8, it says, He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. Mm. That statement itself, it just shows us the very nature of God. Yeah. God is love. God is love. Everything That's about right. God is love. And it just doesn't say God has love mm. or God just shows love. He is love. Mm. That's his very nature. Everything about God is love. He does things because he loves us. He That's does right. things for us because he loves us. And he sent Jesus to die for us mm. all because of love. Yeah. God loves you so much. Yeah, maybe you think your life is a mistake. Maybe you feel like you're not special and because of the things that have happened to you. Mm. But today you can know that God's word won't change. Yeah. God loves you very much. Yeah. And we see, you know, all throughout the scripture that God had a big plan for mankind. I mean, in the beginning, we see that God had created man with a, with a purpose and mm. with a plan. Yeah. But, you know, things just changed. Man disobeyed God and, you know, sin came into the world. And this caused a disruption between the fellowship of man and God. Mm. But God somehow wanted to restore that fellowship back. That's right. He restored and, it back. And man also, you know, because of the disobedience, there was a sinful nature that man had uh, developed. And so it actually brought a bridge between God and man. Mm. And it, uh, like you said, the fellowship was cut off. That's right. And God didn't like that. He wanted to restore our fellowship back with him. That's yeah. the reason about this plan. And you know what? In the beginning, we see that when God created man, he was created just perfect. There was nothing wrong with him. Hmm. But man sinned, and as a result of that sin, it caused a separation. Yeah. And, but you see, God is so good. He just wanted that fellowship back. Yeah. But the price to be paid for sin was so heavy. Yeah. It was too much, more than he could take. Yeah. Because of and man's yeah. sinful nature, we couldn't pay the price. Mm. Our blood was defiled. And God was the only one who could send His Son, His perfect Son, mm. who had pure blood, to die for us. And yeah. by shedding blood, that was the only way that God could redeem mankind That's right. and set us free yeah. from sin. And the price that had to be paid was, you know, innocent blood, yeah. which was His Son. And that was very difficult. It yeah. was not easy. It was. Yeah. And you might ask, you know, why would God do something when man messed up? Why does He want to restore that fellowship back? Mm. It's very simple. Because God's very nature is love. Mm. And you can believe that today. Maybe you don't know anything about God. Maybe you th you've heard things about Him and you've had all these ideas. But just in three words, you can just sum it up. God is love. That's right. He is love and He loves you very much. Mm. And He wants to have a relationship with you. That's the most greatest thing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And, so, uh, yeah. you know, I was just also looking at this next verse in First John was... 9 it says in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him so God manifested his love 
to us by sending His only begotten Son, Jesus, into the world so that we can live through Him. And verse 10 is also continuing that and says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. So Jesus was the price that had to be paid for us to be redeemed, right? And the blood of Jesus. And so that's how much of love God has mm. for us. And, uh, you know, you were even talking about everlasting love, God's yeah. everlasting love. That's right. God's love is just so wonderful. Yeah. It's not something that you have to earn. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is believe in the price yeah. that He paid for you and you can have everlasting life. Yeah. And I want to take you back one more time to that scripture in John 3.16. There's so much of truth from John 3.16. I mean, you can just break it down and sit on this scripture the whole day yeah. because there's so much to learn from this verse. Yeah. I want to read to you one more time what it says. It says, God loved the world. Now, who is in the world? We see that people are in the world, mm. right? And, you know, when you think of people, you think of individuals. And God truly loves people. That's what yeah. I love about God is He loves people. And see what the next part says. It says, God loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And God's kind of love is a giving love. He doesn't just, you know, speak mm. and just say, I love you, I love you. Yeah. God's love gives. And the best gift that God gave to us is His Son Jesus yeah. to die on the cross yeah. for us, who paid the price for sin and restored us back to God. Yeah. yeah, that's a good that's, work. That's that true. I mean, that's big, actually, when you yeah. go to see. Let's look at the next part. It says that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. And today, maybe your life is messed up. Maybe you feel like, you know, things have all gone wrong in your life. And you don't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, the only way you can come back and really understand what life is, is to receive Jesus into your heart. He's mm -hmm. the only author of everlasting life. Yeah. He's the giver of all good things. That's right. So, you know, maybe, you know, sometimes we think, well, why do I need Jesus? Why, why can't I just live my life, you know, without, with, without Jesus? But you see, the only way you can truly enjoy life is when you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Yeah. He's going to fill your life with meaning and purpose. Mm, You'll right. have a reason to live. Yeah. I mean, just imagine every day you're living on this earth and you have no reason to live. But mm. when you receive Jesus, there is truly a reason to live, yeah, and purpose. you can receive Him. That's yeah, right. if God is such a wonderful God, mm. and so, like we were saying earlier, you know, the price to be paid for sin was so high, and God had to send Jesus down mm. to this earth to pay the price. Mm. I mean, His blood was—it was innocent. There was no sin in it. Yeah. But we see that He He came down to earth as a man. And he humbled himself and gave his life so that we can be restored back to God in fellowship mm. with him. And that word everlasting life also is important because, mm. you know, life after death is something that, you know, we don't often think about, but it's something that is lingering in the back of our mind. What will happen to me, you know, when I die? Is mm. there a life after death? I don't know about it. And so God, he wants to promise you today when you believe in Jesus, when you believe in the finished work, the redemptive work that Jesus did for you. See, He paid the price for your sins and He died for you and He was resurrected. See, Jesus didn't, didn't just stay in the grave, mm. right? God raised Him up from the grave. So that's a reason we have a living hope. That's right. And so through all that, God says, I want to give you eternal life, mm. everlasting life. Yeah. So it's also an assurance after you leave this earth, when you die, you will go to be with the Lord in heaven and you won't have to spend eternity, you know, tormented and in mm. fear. So it's an assurance that we of, have. yeah, that we have everlasting life in yeah. Jesus. That's, that's one thing when you said assurance in life is sometimes we, you know, get worried about our future and we don't know what's going to happen in the future. But when you receive Jesus, one great thing about it is that your future is secure. Mm. I mean, you can be assured that you're going to heaven. You're not going yeah. to hell. You're not going to, you know, live forever separated from God. Mm. When you receive Jesus Christ into your life, you can have an assurance that your future is secure mm. because that's what God has come to give us. He said, yeah. you know, you can have everlasting life. 
it's it's a blessed thing to know that you can have this kind of life mm. and we see that you know Jesus Christ when he died on this uh, on the cross i mean he paid the price for us so we can have an everlasting life mm. and everlasting life is the god kind of life yeah it's not just a life only in heaven but on this earth you can have an assurance that yeah. you know you can walk in healing you can walk in peace and enjoy what a life it is yeah. i mean just to have everlasting life yeah and also you know referring to this same verse everlasting life is is truly a blessing mm. and um thinking about how god loved us so much sometimes yeah. contrary to what we sometimes think god is a very angry god mm. and god is a very he i mean he's mad at me because of the things that i've done and maybe god doesn't love me maybe he doesn't want to have fellowship with me mm. but you see in the next verse it says Oh, or sometimes you might be thinking, you know, maybe because of the wrong things that I've did, I don't deserve God's love. And why would God want to love such a person like me? Well, verse 17 says, "For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved." Mm-hmm. And that scripture is just so loaded with stuff. Yeah. It says, "God sent not his son, Jesus, into the world to condemn the world." God is not a condemning God. That's right. I mean, that is so awesome there. Sometimes we think God is up there just trying to condemn us and put us down, but God is not a God like that. Yeah. It says that he has come to give us an everlasting life. That's right. And you'll actually when you when you have a relationship with God, you'll see that there is no condemnation in this relationship. Mm. There is only peace, there's only joy. Yeah. Praise God for and his and life. And condemnation is also like referring to accusations mm. god will never point at you and you know when you receive jesus and when he becomes the lord of your life god will never point at you and say you know you did this in the past you did all these things and so how can i you know love you that much mm. see that's the love of god he doesn't condemn us for what we did that's right. but you know and you know jesus coming to earth that was the reason he took upon himself the sin of the whole world yeah. the bible talks about jesus he was crucified on the cross and he bore the weight of sin for all mankind and that price was not easy yeah i mean he the bible says that his body it was just so you know it was it was marred completely you couldn't even tell that he was a human being when he was yeah. on that cross But like we said earlier the reason he did that was to restore you back in fellowship with God. Yeah. And just imagine you're living life every day and having a relationship with the creator of the universe. Mm. And today maybe you want that relationship. You're saying, you know, that that looks exciting but can I have it? Yes, you can. It's yeah. for everybody who believes. Amen. So we're going to pray a prayer with you right now. And even as we pray, you can believe that God, he loves you so much. I mean, yeah. just let that sink into you. God loves me. He doesn't just love, you know, some people and only those who do good, but God loves me. So let's pray a prayer and by praying this prayer, Jesus Christ will come to live in your heart. Let's Amen. pray. You can repeat it after us. Let's say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe. I believe that you died on the cross for me. That you died on the cross for me. I believe. I believe that you rose again. That you rose again on the third day. On the third day. To give me a new life. To give me a new life. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. I receive you as Lord and Savior. I receive you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So now today you can believe that Jesus Christ has come to live in your heart mm-hmm. and he is giving giving you a brand new life yeah. and this life is everlasting life yeah. enjoy the life of Jesus amen